So EVOS is a collaboration of about a hundred or so people. Um, they're distributed all over the world. There's about at least 10 different countries with, with participating members. And in particular, we have people in New Mexico who really run the experiment day to day. And they really put in an enormous amount of work making this a successful experiment. Within cosmology, we have a standard model. This model describes how, on the largest scales we can see, the universe evolves. So EBOS is designed to measure the three-dimensional positions of galaxies. One of the techniques we use um, with EBOS data to measure the expansion of the universe is called the Barron Acoustic Oscillation Technique. This uses a standard ruler in the distribution of galaxies. And we use this scale to measure the accelerated expansion of the universe. It is considered an incredibly robust technique within the community. When the light of the distant galaxy propagates through space, it is stretched by the expansion of the universe, which changes wavelengths and makes it redder, and this is known as the redshift. So the further the galaxy is, the greater the redshift will be, and that allows us to infer its distance. However, the redshift has an additional component that is due to the small contribution of the galaxy's own velocity, and which moves in response to the gravitational attraction of the surrounding matter. And these two components cannot be really separated from each other. But the statistical analysis of the data from the EBOS allow us to distinguish these effects of the velocity from that of expansion. The biggest challenge of EBOS is the sheer size of the project. There's machinery with many, many moving parts. And those parts are being run all over the world. Is when we're actually running observations week after week, year after year, for five years, observing you know, over 1,000 independent fields, we have to make sure that's all done uniformly and consistently in a way that we understand the entire throughput of this system. You have many analyses going on, uh, projects, you know, analyses being done in different countries, being done by different people, uh, and you have to have this network where everyone is in agreement about how to proceed to the final measurement and make sure that everything is understood at better than the 1% level that allow us to accurately reconstruct the history of the expansion and the growth structure of the universe over a cosmic time of about 11 billion years and covering almost 80% of the entire age of the universe. So it's really exciting times. We're pushing to galaxies that are further away from us than has previously been looked at. And we find that even for these galaxies, this standard picture holds. The SDSS has had a huge impact over the last decade on measurements of the curvature of the universe and its current expansion, represented by the Hubble constant. We've been able to significantly shrink the allowable parameters with regards to the curvature of space. Thanks to EBOS, our best constraints show that it is nearly flat, with 70% of the current energy density in the form of dark energy, a mysterious component that is causing the current acceleration.